What's up everyone? I hope all of you are doing fantastic. A couple weeks ago I uploaded a video talking about my approach to editing city photography. Now today I want to talk to you guys about something completely opposite, landscape photography. My approach might be different than yours, but I'll walk you through it step by step on how I edit my images and really make sure that they're vibrant and of course they have that Amplander stamp on them. So without further ado, cue intro. My glasses got all foggy and we are on. Now before we get straight into the editing process, I want to quickly thank today's video sponsor PPA, the Professional Photographers of America, a community with over 30,000 photographers and growing that can provide you with equipment insurance, education and business tools. I'm a member myself and here's why you should also join. For a low monthly price, you receive a variety of unbeatable benefits including $15,000 worth of equipment insurance data recovery services, and education. But today I want to highlight two benefits that will keep money in your pocket and protect you. PPA partners with vendors and service providers to offer exclusive member discounts and savings that help you save money on things you need most. We're talking about gear, software, accessories, you name it. Your membership can virtually pay for itself. Some of those savings even come from notable brands like Canon, Dell, Office Depot, b &H, and much more. And one of PPA's most useful business resources is its customizable contract. You can download them, compare and edit wide range of documents including event contracts, cancellation letters, model releases, and copyright transfers. So be sure to look at the link in my bio and save $25 off of your PPA membership today. All right, guys, so we are working with about seven different landscape photos. These images were specifically tied to a project that I got to work with, um, I want to say two years ago with Mercedes Benz called Journey North, where we took two G classes from Vancouver, drove them through Alberta, through Banff, Jasper, all the national parks, and made our way up to Yukon uh, and ended up in Whitehorse. The journey was absolutely incredible. The images that we captured were phenomenal. I'm going to show some of them so you guys can kind of see what the trip looked like, but it was surreal. We drove for, I think it was like 36, 38 hours. Uh, obviously, we had breaks and we stopped in different hotels here and there, but the experience was by far one of my favorite road trips. And I hope to do it one day again because uh, the images and the content that I was able to create just really stood out and I still to this day love to go back to them and hence why I'm going back to them today so that I can show you guys examples of different landscape images that I've captured. There's a few with cars actually in them uh, but the cars are not supposed to be the main focus. It's supposed to be the landscape that we're talking about here and the ways that in which you can enhance your images. So let's just go ahead and start. I want to just quickly show a preview of each of the images. So you can kind of see what we're working with. Uh, we have this beautiful one with uh, obviously a lot of uh, greenery and the G-Class going through what seems like a muddy path. Then we have, this is getting closer to the Yukon. You have these amazing mountain tops. I just love the way that the light was hitting it. There was really a lot of shadows and contrast. And then I thought it'd be great to incorporate some sort of, you know, animal or, you know, natural life. Uh, here we had a deer that we got to see nice sunset rich vibrant colors how do you work with those obviously composition when there's contrasting colors what do you do then and for this image the idea here is to think about how to make this image pop obviously this was captured on a using a drone and so there's only a certain level of contrast that you can create an image using drones now this one was on a helicopter so i'm using my dslr here and what is the difference. So seven images, I'm gonna to try to go through them as quick as possible and give you guys tips and whatnot while I'm doing the edits. Let's go ahead and start. So I'm sure most of you have your own presets that you apply when you're editing images. If not, you might be using mine, but when I do apply my presets, I try to go ahead and apply them to every single photo just to see what they look like as a base. Um, and obviously you can see right away that exposures sometimes don't match, the colors are maybe too vibrant or it just doesn't look like what I would perceive as my style. So, but at least I can see the foundation and now I can go ahead and start tweaking the image in order to create that unity. And this is a great way for you to 
create that consistency in your images, which is something I always, always recommend because you want your images to stand out and for people to be able to recognize your work. So first thing, as always, begin with, you know, the tones, exposures here. You want to make sure your white balance is accordingly and how you want it, your image to actually be perceived. Um, I'm not drawn to warmer images too much, so I'm always kind of leaning towards cooler temperature. In terms of exposure, we're just going to we're going to increase it enough so that we can see the image and the vehicle, of, of course. Um, but the vehicle is not only the important aspect of this image. The landscape is also very important because this is also about landscape editing. How do you work with landscapes even when you might actually have a subject in them? Um, highlights, we're just going to just play around with a lot of these settings here. Shadows and whatnot. And it's always a response thing, right? Like obviously when you're applying a preset, it's going to you know right away give you certain settings and you want to now play around with each dial to see how it the image is going to respond to it accordingly so i'm not liking the yellow here so i'm just going to reduce it just a little bit and exposure And another thing that's very important is that you want your edits to be realistic. You don't want to stretch the imagination too far, especially when you're dealing with product photography. I always recommend everyone to be very, very mindful of that. Um, but another thing that's very also important is to make sure that your subject in any image is always um, visible and sharp. Uh, and then if there's any issues around that, you want to try to clarify it right away so that your subject pops while also being able to respect the environment that it's in. And I love the fact that these trees here have so much kind of detail to them and I want to bring more emphasis, to the, emphasis there. So it's just about brightening up the, those areas, creating that contrast. So we're already seeing a pretty substantial difference in the image uh, in terms of tone, in terms of color, in terms of exposure. And if we want to even give it more, we can of course use our beautiful gradients. And just create more emphasis if needed. So I'm going to leave this image like this for now and proceed to the next photo. Now I'm paying attention to the last photo as the base for starting off the consistency. So I want this image to respect that last image and to work well with it so that I can share the images together cohesively. You might hear my computer just going crazy right now. Um, <laughs> my microphone is right next to my computer so the audio might be going crazy right now. But... Don't mind that. It's amazing how powerful you feel when you're around landscapes like this. You just the earth earthiness of it, the the grandness of it just makes you feel so much more, you know, substantial as a human. And I feel like it gives us almost like the meaning behind what we do and the things that we, we get to live out for. Um, and I, I always recommend everyone going visit places like this because it just truly transform your perspective. Especially as a landscape photographer, you really learn to adapt properly to environments like this because you got to find the right angles. And sometimes finding the right angles or the right shots means really putting yourself into those environments. And even when they might not be as comfortable as you imagine. So this was kind of a... We were driving where I think we were just about to enter the Yukon and we pulled over and I said, guys, I want to get a shot of this because I think there was a storm coming or something was like kind of in, you know, about to happen. And I just loved the way that the clouds were breaking and there was light hitting certain spots in the mountain. And I just thought, OK, if I'm going to edit this, I'm going to create contrast. I'm going to create a moodiness. I want people to just look at this and just feel powerful. And this is kind of the look I'm trying to achieve right now. So. Let's go ahead and compare. 
Now, some of you are probably like, okay, he's applying his preset and just walking us through what he's doing. Yes, my preset has certain features, right? The, fe the, the features that are key to my presets is contrast. So I'm increasing my contrast. I'm pulling back the highlights. I'm pulling up the shadows because of the fact that I reduced the highlights and I'm giving so much contrast. Now, when you give contrast to an image, you reduce all the shadows. You're basically eliminating the shadows. So you have to bring up the shadows. In terms of clarity, I always reduce clarity. And I mentioned this so many times in previous videos. The reason why is because when I share content like this on social media, it gets compressed. And when it gets compressed, it just looks sharper and more in contrast. So I reduce the clarity in order for it to kind of almost balance itself. And my tone curve is like this. Um, I mean, it's hard to explain, but there's some, you know, obviously you got your your highlights, your shadows, and you know, each of them is balanced by the image. Um, and I always tell people, you don't need to worry about the actual tone curve if you're dealing with the dials themselves, but the tone curves do really help you refine your images. Um, I'm not gonna go through this right now because I've gone through this in so many editing videos before, and also because I have seven filters to edit. So <laughs> we're just gonna skip through that. One thing I, I noticed is that I've watched people edit before and even though you might not have all the colors of the spectrum in your image, you'd be surprised in even the smallest bit that can really, if you sway the right way in terms of the hue, you can make a drastic impact in the image. For example, bring up the yellow as you can see and then when you reduce it, you it, it's not that like you're losing contrast but it's more so that it's now feels a lot more balanced and it feels a lot more easy on the eyes. And that's very important for me. Next photo. Now this time we actually have uh, an element, a, a main subject, a live subject in the photos. And as you can tell, obviously exposure is kind of all over the place. So we got to make sure that this has enough light while the background is able to be still exposed. Now I'm trying to get this photo to almost feel like this one. And that might take some time because obviously you got so many different options in terms of colors and there's exposure differences and highlights are all over the place, but there's ways to really manipulate the image that you can start to achieve that look. Just gotta take it slowly and build it so that it feels right. And as always, when you have a subject in the landscape, you wanna go over your subject and you wanna make sure that they are in clarity, their sharpness and contrast and they're popping out of the landscape so you can visibly see them. I'm noticing here a major disturbance in that space right there, so we're gonna solve it.
and sometimes an image could be super challenging and that's something that <laughs> might drive people crazy like something like this would take me obviously maybe 15 20 minutes to edit properly but because of this video i'm trying to edit it as quickly as possible and show you guys the different techniques and approaches that i apply but again things to think about consistency so i'm i'm trying to replicate what i've done in the past so that there's some sort of flow and respective kind of characteristics in each of the images another thing is making sure that there's a balance in the images whether or not it's the setting or the subject or the environment as a landscape there's a balance in terms of what you're looking at and that you're not feeling overwhelmed or over empowered overpowered by each of the characteristics of the image obviously i want the background to be there and i want the background to be something of a focal point but i don't want it to overwhelm the viewer and there's ways to do that by just kind of cleaning it up and reducing its its emphasis so kind of feeling this now and you can always come back to it but right now it feels a little bit more balanced for me i'm sure you guys want to see the before and after so let's take a look it's it's quite substantial And here, this one, when you get a very colorful sky full of colors and different vibrancies, you don't want to take away from that because at the end of the day, it is a sunset and you have to respect the sunset. But how do you keep it consistent? Well, again, it's about eliminating specific colors. So yellow was one color, as you guys can see in this, we have to start to eliminate because we want some sort of rebalance between the images. Um, another thing is about drawing emphasis. Emphasis is on certain character areas of the image. So I'm loving the fact that there's like these burns in the sky in certain areas. And we're not, I'm not going to do what I'm doing right now, which is darkening them. Uh, that's how I just know where the areas I'm focusing are. That's the one thing I always recommend as well. So if you're using a brush tool, just set your brush tool so that it's underexposed and that there's a color or temperature difference so that you can see where you're actually you know, manipulating an image. Um, but the idea here is that you can create more contrast and just simply, simply just kind of make little changes that can make the image pop even more. That feels good to me. Okay. So now this photo is a little different because you're getting different colors. Obviously something got eliminated, the purples. Um, and we want those purples and magentas back, but we want to kind of change their tone maybe to something different that can complement the landscape. And as far as the landscape, we're going to kind of bring the greens back to a nice burnt yellow. I know that doesn't seem realistic, but you'd be surprised. A lot of people do think landscapes look like this. Um, but again, you're starting to see small little changes that allow the image to kind of look like previous photos. Uh, and it is a lot of desaturation in my approach, but it's very calculated desaturation. It's not just like, oh, I'm just going to desaturate here, here, here. And then all of a sudden the image is going to look perfect. No, it's about balancing balancing different areas of the image and making sure that it looks good across the board subjects always in focus and sharp That feels much better to me. We're gonna go ahead to the next image. Good old drone photos, my least favorite things because of the fact that they just lose, they don't really gain the detail that I want them to. 
um, but manipulation is key and especially in photography you have so much options for manipulation where you can make something look absolutely amazing when it really doesn't I mean this could obviously look great but we're gonna try to figure out a way to to make it pop even more Now I already feel as if drone photos are already like super sharp and as you can see they're kind of patchy and they have this weird texture to them. Uh, this is where noise reduction actually becomes somewhat useful. Because it melts the treetops which is what I want. I don't want this patchy look to always occur. So this preset that I'm applying already has my split tones decided and I based them on so many other photos I've edited in the past. So I'm not really touching the color grading options here, just kind of leaving that as it is, more so focusing on the hues and changing and manipulating colors just to create that consistency and flow. I'm feeling this. Sweet. Okay, next photo. This helicopter ride was so much fun. So much fun. But it was a very, very exposed day where there was a lot of sunlight and we were just kind of going at pretty quick speed. Um, it was hard to even sometimes focus and get a shot. But in the times that I did, I tried to avoid the wing like here. And, you know, that's sometimes things you just got to work around. Not everything's going to be perfect, um, but thankfully there's spot removal and Photoshop that can create wonders. Um, now for this photo, the idea is to respect all the other photos and just to really think about how to balance it. I mean, the idea here is that you want to draw emphasis to the body of water, but at the same time, allow people to appreciate the landscape and the mountain tops. Um, so how do you do that? Well, I mean, first and foremost, you got to kind of pick your battles, like which is more important for you? Is it the mountains or the lake? And if it's the lake, then you have to make sure that there's a contrast between them. And that might be not a color contrast, but an exposure contrast, meaning that one is darker and the other one is lighter. And that's, the, the, I think, what I'm going to do in terms of approach. I'm just going to make the mountain areas a little bit more darker and the, the body of water just a little bit brighter um, and that should be a good way to kind of just create that extra bit of contrast and draw your eyes straight to the body of water. Okay, so when you're done editing your images, what I typically do is I go through every single one to see if they really do embody my style, my approach, um, and also do they embody the story I'm trying to tell. Obviously, this was a road trip that I went from different parts of, you know, the west coast of Canada all the way to the north. Um, so there's differences in landscapes, obviously differences during the days and the times of the days, sunsets, sunrises, you name it. But can I create a consistency that allows someone to view these images and say, okay, these are, these are, these are all telling one story, which is what I love. And 
uh, is there there's a flow to them and it allows people to resonate and connect with each of the images on their own but together kind of cohesively so you do that by going through each image and looking at it and seeing okay where can I make my changes and what can I tweak in order to continue to build that consistency or just how can I continue to improve the image so that it looks proper to the eye Okay, so now that I finished editing all the images, I'll just kind of scroll through and if I continue seeing things that need tweaking, I'll go ahead and make those adjustments. But right now I'm loving the kind of feeling that I'm getting across the board from each of the photos. There's some consistency, which I'll keep saying over and over, uh, but there's dramaticness. There's this whole kind of like wow this is a crazy road trip you went off-roading i want to feel those feel i want to feel that feeling i want someone when they're looking at these pictures to know that this wasn't an easy trip it wasn't just daisies you know flowers and everything like that no no this is like crazy road trip it was storm some days it was you know we went through like we went through mud we went through terrain we went through forests we went through different things to get to our final destination and there are certain moments where we paused and we got to see these beautiful sunsets and there was other times where we paused just so that we can get out of the rainstorm um and that's hard to really you know share in in photos that are haven't been edited and i feel like emotion is something that you can bring to a photo even when it doesn't have it initially um, and what i mean by that is that when you take a photo obviously it holds a certain level of character what i mean by that is that when you take an image it holds only a certain amount of truth um, the other component of it comes from your post-production process where you're editing it and putting your emotion into it and telling your you know your audience this is what i was feeling when i was on this road trip and for this one particular i felt like it was super you know earthy super terrainy uh, it was super rough and the images have that feeling to them you know they have the moodiness they have the darkness uh, and people describe my editing style as moody and dark and so on and so forth but that is sometimes the feeling that i get from different locations does it mean i edit all my photos like that no but do i love that idea of incorporating it across my photos yes and i think when you're editing your landscape images no matter what they are try to try to create some sort of feeling in them and if you can take that feeling and you know utilize it in different images and different photos that you take you can really tell a cool story that people appreciate and not only in like small bodies of work but in the grandness of all your work so that's about it now in terms of editing landscape photos there's a million things that you can do and there's a million possibilities of how you can approach them Ultimately, I just wanted to show you guys my editing process without going into too much, too much in depth, uh, because obviously there's time limits and I can't talk for 30 hours uh, on a YouTube video. But just take your time and tr think about consistency, think about contrast, think about emotion, and think about the journey that you're trying to tell or the story that you're trying to convey through your photos. And that will really help you elevate the quality of work and also allow you to be a better storyteller. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I'll try to go through them and answer them the best I can. Um, and as always, remember to like, subscribe and comment and I'll see you guys all very soon. Peace.